bringing local ingredients into the kitchen. Lincolnshire Co-op sponsors the Lincolnshire Kitchen. of the Lincolnshire Kitchen, the show that celebrates the very best locally grown food and produce. I'll be meeting some of the growers and farmers from across the county and taking a closer look at why local really is best. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use some of the leftovers up. We'll be making a delicious soup, a Boxing Day brunch and of course showing you how to use up that leftover turkey. I just need a few extra ingredients to have ready in the store cupboard. Hi, Hi Dan, how are you alright? I'm good, how are you? I'm very well, I know I can't come in until I get suited and booted. Yeah, go and get changed and uh, we'll have you and make some sausages together. Alright, can't wait. Okay. <laughs> So how long have you been making sausages for? Personally, I've been doing it since I was about 11 or 12 years old. It'd be interesting to know how many you'd actually made. Oh, no, it? yeah. Um, but it was in my grandfather's name since 1904, That's so over 100 years. It would be nice for you to show me how you make your sausages yep. before I go to the shop to get some. Yeah, no problem. So, um, We'll I'm see sure... if we can get them all the same size. Oh, no, I don't think we will. <laughs> I know, and you're obviously going to be using lovely shoulder, and where, yep. do, you, and where do you get your pigs from generally? Um, David Wright down the road. So it's all local? Yeah. So it's the shoulder? Yep. And you need a bit of fat, don't you? Yeah, we uh, yeah, get good quality mm. pork, pork shoulder outdoor mm. reared. Yes. Um, and then we mince it, mix it, and then uh, add our secret ingredients that my mum still weighs off. Ah, oh, um, does she? Yeah. Oh, you're not going to tell me that bit then? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Right, well, thank you very, very much for these. Absolutely fantastic, aren't they? Yep. I'm really, really pleased with You've them. done very well. I'm going to go down to the shop now to see Scott. Take care, Dan. Bye-bye. Cheers. So the sausages that are the most popular that you sell here are? Uh, the Boston sausage, which we're famous for. Tell me, on a regular basis, how many sausages do you sell and how much does it go up to at Christmas time? Well, uh, on average week, we do roughly two tonnes of, of sausages a week. And then when it comes to Christmas time, it just sort of escalates and it goes up to about eight tonnes during that week. So it, you know, it's fourfold. Eight tonnes? Eight tonnes. That is an awful lot. And, and do you cook sausages on Christmas Day? I certainly do. Christmas Day wouldn't be complete without it. I also like to cook them on Boxing Day. Oh, Scott, thank you very much indeed. You're very welcome. Happy Christmas. And the same to you. Bye. Bye. Math, I've known you quite a long time, right from the outset of you making your wonderful uh, curry paste. So, so tell me what makes them so special. The special thing about our ingredients, Rachel, is that we use only the top quality ingredients and we blend it in an uncooked form. It's uncooked, naturally preserved in a bit of rapeseed and vegetable oils. To enable and help the cook at home to get the authentic taste but saving them the time of trying to buy all the fresh ingredients and the other ingredients required to make the curry from scratch. Now listen, Matt, I'm going to be making on Boxing Day, I'm going to be using up the, left of, uh, the leftovers of my turkey. Right. 
and I want to make a curry, what would be the best one? Do you think? I, I would I would probably go for a for a, a fruity paste. We got one which is we call the Balti paste, yes. which has got a bit of dry mangoes in there, which gives that nice fruity taste. And if you were to just having it not like a curry, it does have that nice flavour in your mouth where you could just have it with salad. So Math, I want the Balti paste if that's okay. But uh, you said you're going to show me quickly how to make. Of course, it. definitely. Right, we're going to put some uh, fresh coriander, green chilli, and fenugreek in there. We're going to put a bit of uh, five of our special spice mix, the cumin, the turmeric, the mm -hmm. coriander powder, the green chilli. This is the chilli powder, isn't it? Okay, it's not, not too much. Right, then this is, this is, uh, oh, the, this, is this one's a garam masala, our special garam masala mix. That's your special family That's right, that's masala, right, garam masala in there. Yeah. So ginger and garlic ginger in there, garlic in there, yeah. And then to sweeten up the balti paste, we should put a bit of a uh, mango chutney. Our your own mango chutney. Our own special blend of mango chutney. And once this goes all in there, we add a bit of rapeseed oil yes. just to keep it all nice and preserved. So I don't need anything more than that. That's it. That smells absolutely delicious, that Balti paste. Now you could say you made your own Balti paste. I can do, but can I can I have some of it in a jar? Definitely. So I don't spill it all I will give you. I'll give you, I'll give you a finished product <laughs> if you'd like to follow me tomorrow. Okay then, we will do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? How are you? The finished Gosh, production this, line. this is where it all happens then, This Matt. is where it all gets labelled up. Oh, look at them up. coming out. Oh, I've never yeah, seen this bit. How looks. exciting. Here you are, Rachel. Hot from the press. Your own Balti curry paste. Maf, you are an absolute star. Thank you so, so much. I just hope that my turkey curry is as good as your curry paste. I hope so as well. I'm sure you will enjoy it. Yeah. Happy Christmas, Matt. Happy, Happy Christmas, Christmas to you as well. Nice to see you. Okay, thank you, thank you. I've got my Balti paste, so I've just got one more ingredient left to collect. <laughs> Mervyn, how old is this windmill? It was built in 1875 on the site of an earlier post mill which has been here since the 1500s. And what type of grain do you actually um, mill here? We mill spelt, wheat and rye. You use different techniques for your milling yeah. and your baking, don't you? Our milling, uh, modern milling is done through roller milling, which is like putting the flour through uh, a series of rollers, like a mangle. Yes. Um, we use traditional stones. The top stone moves, the bottom stone stays where it is, and you've seen the, the yes. grooves in the stones. And what we actually do is shear the grain. It's not crushed. Like, as in between rollers, it's, yeah. it's cut. So each tiny particle mm. of flour is a snip. And are, is all the bread that you do organic? Is it all organic? It's all organic, yes. yes. And how many different types of bread do you actually make in the bakery? Um, up to 20. How many loaves a week do you think you bake? Possibly about 800. 800? Mm -hmm. I didn't realise it was as many as that, actually. Yeah, yeah. So do you think that I can now go into your bakery and make some bread for me for Boxing Day? Absolutely. So, Mervyn, you've got your dough here. Yes, uh, that's, so, that's been proven for about the last two and a half hours. OK, so show me what you're going to do with this, then. Right. OK, so we divide it out weighed off because we want them all the same size. What we do next, we hand, okay. it, we hand it up. So basically, you just roll it along on the table, just like and that. And I, I notice you're not using any flour on the table at no, all? No, no, no flour, no oil. Just so it's just it's literally just float, rolling your hands? Float, float your hands over it. So we've done the fugas mm -hmm. here, so what, what's going to happen to them now? Well, they're just going to rest like that for 10 minutes. Yes. Then we'll come back, we'll pin them out, and we'll cut them into the right shape. Then we'll put a few herbs on them, and then they can prove up, and then they'll be baked. That's my final ingredient, so I'm going to go back to the kitchen and do some cooking. 
Thanks, Melvin. The week between Boxing Day and New Year's Eve is often spent visiting family and friends. And when you go to visit, you usually take a gift with you. I like to make something myself. It's really personal and always really appreciated. One of the simplest things to make is fudge. And here's how to make it. Now here's the simplest way to make fudge. It's a very old fashioned recipe I've got. I've got some full fat milk, which I'm gonna put into the pan. I've got some demerara sugar, and it's actually quite important to use demerara sugar. Don't use any other. And I'm going to add some butter. This is just very luscious, this. I love making fudge. Some sweetened condensed milk as well. So, now this is not for the faint hearted, I have to tell you. You have to stay and stir it. The sugar needs to be melted really slowly. So what we're going to do is stand here for a little bit of a while, get the sugar melting, and then we're going to simmer it. So the fudge is nearly ready, and now I'm going to add a good slug of vanilla extract. I need to get my fudge mixture up to 118 degrees centigrade, so I'm going to use a probe to check that I've got the right temperature. and I put it straight into cold water, as you can see. Now what you've got to do is actually stir like crazy. As it goes cold, it starts to, to sort of crystallise. Right, I'm just going to add some raisins now. Right, now it really has set. I'm going to put that in here now. So now the fudge is set and hardened, I'm able to turn it out of the tin and cut it into small squares. I'm a bit of a one for presentation, so I've got these little cellophane bags and I'm going to put about eight or ten pieces in there and tie the top with some lovely ribbon and a nice label. Well, that's the fudge done. To find out more about our recipes and local Lincolnshire food, just go to our website lincolnshirekitchen.tv I'll be back after the break to show you how there's more to leftovers than cold turkey. See you then. Bringing local ingredients into the kitchen. Lincolnshire Co-op sponsors the Lincolnshire Kitchen.